Welcome back to the New Dramatical Report. We brought Tim Alexander on early because there's so much news to cover today. And we have, of course, coming up the first blood moon, which is going to be April 15th, or, or uh, Passover, Pesha. We have the uh, equinoxes, and we've had some earthquake foreshocks here in Northern California and elsewhere. We have the shocks going on back and forth with the tit for tat, I call it the feather duster uh, sanctions against Putin and Putin putting sanctions back on American politicians, uh, banning them from Russia. Someone like uh, McCain, of course, is so crazy, so he kind of laughs at it and thinks it's a big joke. It's not a joke when you're putting first strike offensive, equal defensive, defensive weapons along the Russian border in Poland and the Czech Republic. It's just asking to start a nuclear war. And, uh, you know, you box Russia in, and Russia being not treated with respect, and you guarantee that uh, they're going to be more aggressive. The West is not going to do anything militarily. I absolutely am certain of that. The very second that the Poles cross that border and try to use the treaty for uh, other European countries to actually attack um, the Russians, the Russians will stop them so flat they won't know what hit them. And it happened two years ago in Georgia, where, and they don't hear this in the regular news, thousands of our special forces, American contract, British Special Forces, SAS, and uh, a European <clears throat> and Israeli were stomped into the dust by the Russians. Yeah, there was yeah. A, a couple of Israeli generals that were actually running the operation for Georgia, and um, the Russians just went in, and, and, and uh, they, they literally were within hours of seizing all of Georgia, and they, they uh, uh, pulled back and only ended up seizing that part, uh, which was uh, Odessa and the other. Right yeah, but what area. they did is they, what, what these people in Georgia were doing, that was back from Israel and America, is they were shelling civilian populated areas and killing people in their own homes. And well, so the they, were, they were following the standard uh, Russian-Soviet tactics. I'm talking about this is what the Americans were doing and the British, yeah, with the backing but, but of the Georgian were, government. But, they were using and, tubed and tubeless artillery to uh, uh, to neutralize an area of advance, which means that they kill everything in that avenue of advance. And if there are apartment buildings full of civilians, well, they die. And uh, the, 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 the thinking is that uh, if everything is dead in that avenue of advance, which might be a mile wide or so, uh, and many, many miles long, that, uh, you know, the, the tanks can roll through and nothing will stop them. But uh, they killed a lot of Russian uh, civilians, and uh, they didn't manage to close off a key uh, tunnel quick enough. And the Spetsba got in there and seized the tunnel, and, and the tanks rolled in. Now, in, in the case of Ukraine, I call this a fulc fulcrum point. Uh, this is an area which is uh, literally vital, strategic, national interest to Russia. Uh, we want to put in, and I say we, the American people don't want to do it, the, the uh, um, monsters. The, the, the satanically the in inhabited sock, pu sock puppets of Satan, that literally exactly. are called people of clay and iron, clay being human flesh avatar by demonic entities. Right, Period. exactly. Uh, they want to put in uh, Theod and... Uh, 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 Patriot 3, et cetera, anti-missile missile systems, which essentially would give the NATO, or particularly the United States, a first strike capability against Russia. Now, Russia, uh, the, the ICBM that Russia fired a couple, uh, less than two weeks ago as a kind of a warning shot, they're highly mobile and they're hard to hit. But the point is that uh, they still have a launch uh, tra trajectory and if you have a really good and fast anti-missile system in close to their launch points, uh, or close enough to the launch points within a few hundred miles, you can shoot them down as they're, uh, as they're going up. And Russia can't stand that because that basically denudes them of a counter uh, force of a, of a mutually assured destruction. And uh, which means they either, down the road, they will either have to uh, totally uh, succumb to what other the IMF, the global banking cartel, and the Zionists will tell them to do, or be annihilated. 
and they're not going to allow that situation to, uh, well, uh, to the, happen. They the, can't. By the way, the, this is a, this is what I call tied into the financial. People don't want to tie these together, but when we work together as a team, Tim, we link it all together. You're the military and strategic expert. What I see this saying is to the Russia, you're going to take the financial deal on the table because we're going to put these anti-missile systems in Georgia, in Ukraine, in in. Uh, <clears throat> in uh, Moldova, as we already did in Poland and Czech Republic, and we're going to encircle you, Russia. So what do you think of that? Yeah. Well, you know, you might get by with that with a lot of countries, but Russia is not the country to try that kind of crap. <clears throat> right. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. what, what we're doing is we're sticking a stick in a bear's cage, and they don't realize the bear's cage bars can be bent by the bear. The bear can reach out, grab you by the head, tear your head off, and then eat you alive before the, the uh, cage... Uh, you know, the, the veterinarians that manage the bear can even get near the cage to stun them. So I think yeah. the Russian bear is awake. Uh, I don't see any military action whatsoever. That's why I call it feather duster sanctions by the West. What are they going to do? Is Obama going to send another angry letter at Putin? It's just ridiculous. Well, that's <clears throat> kind of what a lot of Russians uh, at the senior level have said. But uh, and, and I suspect you're totally right on that. But he, here's the here's the key question you always have to ask: uh, Why? Okay, uh, we've spent five billion dollars of U.S. taxpayers' money, and of course, what's five billion to them? They print it. But uh, right. and George Soros spent who knows how much of the Rothschild money, and there was a lot of effort, a lot of time put into creating. Uh, this uh, coup, to creating the, the situation on the ground. And they were paying some of these people 40, 50 bucks a day. That's a lot of money in a, in a country like the Ukraine. I mean, that is big bucks uh, to be out and riot. And then, of course, they sent in the Mossad CIA snipers, and they were firing in both directions. They were killing people on both sides to, to stir everything up. Well, why? Okay. Um, I, there are, are two uh, global perspectives and a, and a third one that has to do with Israel. Uh, first off, uh, one objective may be to set this all up to use the Ukraine as the trigger point for the global economic collapse. To yeah, usher I think in so. One world I think you're, you're very wise in making that analysis. I agree 100%. They want this is the perfect excuse to collapse the economy and devalue the dollar, which is a prelude to the bringing about a biometric we call authentication currency, which is literally called the mark of the beast, which America Absolutely. will force on the whole world. That's why this is part of a scheme. Because remember now, they box brush in. They tried it two years ago in Georgia. Now they're doing it in in Ukraine. This revolution in Kiev was totally sponsored by the West. So uh, they, well, you they made the first thing, Russia had no first choice. First thing Russia did is they, they seized the most important strategic uh, real estate that there was, which was their bases in the Crimean. They went in first, and uh, they're they're getting ready to go in. I, I, yeah, they'll yeah. take at least the eastern Ukraine, but my guess is perhaps with the assistance of Belarus, yeah, yeah, yeah. they will seize yeah. all of the Ukraine, and they'll do yeah. it in yeah. three days' time. Right. Now, here's the problem, though. Russia is very strong militarily. But the economy was projected even before this Ukraine issue to be only grow at 1%, which is one-third of what America is growing, 3%. Uh, I think that they're going to try to crush or crash. It's what I call this perestroika glasnost too, uh, the Russian economy. And with the trade sanctions, which will bite, uh, Russia's economy will crash and burn. And I think that in the next year or so, at the very least, maybe less, Russia will have to come to the table and accept the fact that, yes, militarily, they can turn America, as one of their Russian experts says, America into ashes, but America can turn their economy into ashes with the thermonuclear weapon of the global hegemony of the banksters from the West. And that process has already started. In some ways, Russia's already lost, because militarily they can do all these things without us doing any resistance whatsoever. But economically, they are completely surrounded like a Russian bear with a noose around its neck. And Tim, we're back. Let's uh, continue this amazing dialogue because I think it's important that people understand we're literally living in a time where dramatic changes in history. We're not setting dates, but the, the convergence of events is happening is biblical. Uh, the West yeah, and, you know, Dr. Or... Bill, uh, it's important. Uh, I had a, a, one of my viewers on my blog, Europe, uh, 
right in. I, did, I didn't post it. But, you know, oh, you said, well, uh, you said such and such was going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. And and I was really tempted to, to let him have it with both barrels. But here's the problem. We, and, and uh, that in most people, uh, are children of the television age. Uh, I grew up with television. I'm sure you did, too. Right. I, I was a little kid when they, they first introduced it, uh, real small. We had Ronald um, Reagan and, uh, and his monkey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know remember that so much, yeah. but uh, I remember. I remember Howdy Doody. I remember Howdy all Doody. The, That's what I was trying to think of. Howdy Doody. Yeah. I cried Howdy with Doody. Remember, uh, remember Roy Roger and folks. Dale Evans? Oh, yeah. The all, half all hour of, of cartoons on a Saturday morning was but, but, all but you But here's got. the thing about the being uh, the television age. We expect things to happen very fast. Uh, the news comes at us very quickly, and uh, Americans tend to be very impatient people anyway. If you talk to Europeans or do business with Europeans, as I have for years, you know, they, as an American, it drives me nuts because they're so slow, except when they want their money. Then they're very quick, but otherwise, they're, they're, oh, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're dead slow. You're a funny guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. Where's the money? Where is the money? You know. Yeah, you I would want the money right now, today, tomorrow. What about yesterday? Delivery next month, the money today. <laughs> yeah, right. You got it. Okay. Now, uh, in the old days, before television and even before radio, uh, we got our news in the newspaper, and you read it, and you had some time to digest it, and it'd be the next day, or the you know maybe you had a morning paper, an afternoon paper. And things took a little bit of time, but now because of television uh, and and the, the television news cycle, remember I was almost a, a big player in that uh, nationally. You you everything is quick, 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 and something like this, which is uh, playing out in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, this is this is literally out of the Bible. This is a uh, a, a process that doesn't happen overnight. And and you you see r wars and rumors of wars and, and and it's natural for us, including you know people like myself that uh, read an incredible amount, to to sometimes say, well, this could happen and it could happen. But if it doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're still not on the road to Armageddon, on the road to World War Three. We're on the road. Uh, road. There's no doubt about that. We're we're actually, uh, as they say, with the turkey, you know that little thin pin that pops up when the turkey's all cooked and it got your or sufficiently cooked. You're not going to get turkey diarrhea. Well, guess what? That pin's about to pop. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're 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 being cooked, and well, we're being now, marinated. Wait, er, we're being marinated every, every way too. Right before the break, <laughs> I, I said there were three things, right? Let's uh, get uh, three possibilities, and, <laughs> and we discussed the first, uh, which was the trigger for for the economic collapse and and uh, the lead into the the new world order uh, RFID chip mark the beast. The second would be uh, just as a trigger mechanism for the Third World War, which uh, these same morons want. I don't quite think we're there yet. Uh, at times, I, I, I do. When you're when you're an analyst, you look at probabilities, and you have to say yes. There is probably a twenty or, or somewhat percent probability that this will go into the Third World War fairly quickly, but. That's not the overwhelming probability. And the reason is, if you look at biblical uh, uh, predictions, the book of Revelations and so forth, we don't have the mark of the beast yet. There's several things that hasn't happened that have to happen. Okay? Yeah. Now, we're, th we're, then there's the that third checklist aspect. Is getting, that checklist is getting obviously, obviously short. <coughs> so it makes me cough when I, <coughs> when I think about it. it make, that checklist is getting awfully, awfully short. You know, yes. if we took all the items that were checked off now, the items that aren't checked are now down to your one hand. Well, and, and you know, we never know, too, uh, uh, for instance, the, the second trumpet. Uh, a lot of people still haven't made the connection, but at the time when the uh, deep water, BP Deepwater Horizon, uh, the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico oil disaster happened, uh, I, I, I didn't make the connection, but one of my viewers sent me in a, a picture, 
and a comment, uh, uh, and you know the the, the, re, the re, uh, words from Scripture. And what St. John said was something that looks like, and this is very important, uh, the, the wording he used, something that looks like a mountain on fire and it will fall into the sea and a third of the sea will become bread. Well, that was this, uh, this uh, multi-story, 20-story tall, deep sea, uh, deep water horizon oil rig. And with fire going and smoke going up, probably a total of 50 stories, and here's uh, poor St. John sitting in a cave on the island of Patmos, uh, and, you know, he has no knowledge of high technology, has no knowledge of sailing ships that big or, or anything like that, and he's seeing it, and he's describing it the best way he can from uh, a perspective of over 1,900 years ago. And he's saying, well, I, this is something that looks like a mountain. I mean, it was this giant thing, and then it fell over and fell into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood red. And that doesn't mean a third of the sea all over the world, but he's talking about right there. Well, the oil that was in the water there had a, a reddish-brown look to it. So he was describing it as best he could over 1,900 years ago, because remember, he lived to be over 90 years old. So, you know, he was describing this. So that's one of the many checklist things that, that has probably already been checked. And at, when 911 happened, uh, there was this uh, a photographer. Uh, or, I mean, there were a lot of photographers at the scene, but there was this trumpet player at the scene. He was standing on the rubble. The rubble is still smoking, same day. And all these photographers say, wow. And they all tried to take this picture. This would have been the iconic picture of the entire uh, uh, tragic event right. on 911. And none of them got a picture. Both the still and video photographers, some of them, they thought they had it. They went back to develop it. It wasn't there. In some cases, their cameras stopped working. And, and I mean, we're talking about professional photographers. Some of them have multiple cameras. Nobody could get a picture of this guy. Okay. But yet multiple people and professional <laughs> photographers and reporters reported it. Well, was it the Archangel Gabriel uh, blowing his trumpet to signal the, uh, the beginning of the end? Well, quite possibly. So there's always things like that that we you may not be on some people's checklist, but have already been checked. Well, now, I think that it says that there's war in heaven. I think a lot of events have already happened. And in the heavenlies, I think a lot of things are transporting right now uh, that we have no conception of. In other words, we're totally ignorant of the fact that, that we're about to be visited by a time of Jacob's trouble. And all these times, things we see right now, like Ukraine and Middle East, these are called the times of sorrow, which precede the spirit of false peace which I see coming very quickly, because if there isn't a peace treaty in the Middle East, and one that deals with Russia, because we're just, we have a new Cold War, a Cold War asterisk, too. And, and, and that's the third thing. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Okay, the third thing, uh, the third possibility in all this, and it's not necessarily exclusively one or the other, okay? By the way, the, the Third World War, yeah, it could be, we're, we're going down that road. It, it, uh, so it can be one and two, uh, but not necessarily two immediately. But number three has to do, if, if you've been watching what's happening in Israel, particularly the last few days, the Israeli parliament has approved several billion uh, sh uh, shekels, or the equivalent of several billion dollars, for an attack on Iran. Uh, the IDF has been told to prepare to uh, invade Syria. Uh, now, why? Well, let's see. From a madman's strategic perspective, uh, Assad has uh, delivered uh, and neutralized half of his chemical warfare force. Russia, the one that stopped the war the last time, uh, is now tied down in the Ukraine. And uh, Netanyahu may say this is the perfect opportunity. <clears throat> and we may get so close to World War III that we may have this treaty. Uh, I, I think the treaty will happen before the summer, and I th really think the blood moons mean something. Uh, this Passover, uh, literally at the point where the Passover means the death angel passed over, and only those that had the blood of the lamb. Remember, the Egyptians used yep. to worship the lamb, but the, the real, the lamb of God, which is God incarnate in flesh, paid for the total price. 
And when they do start the blood sacrifice, it's an abomination that Obama will set up. The only man on earth who can actually ratify the building of the temple is the U.S. president before 2016. And that's the abominator. He's the one. And we're back with Tim, and uh, Tim, let's continue with this remarkable well, dialogue. Yeah, within, uh, uh, Dr. Bill, within the last, oh, roughly 24 hours, three very important senior players in Washington, D.C., have uh, basically said uh, that the U.S. intelligence community is out of control. Uh, you You're Senator kidding. Ra- are you yeah, kidding me? You, know, yeah, you mean like even, talk. Yeah. I, what I have, by the way, what I have is that there's a battle going on that the APAC, which is, of course, uh, the Israeli uh, Political Action Committee, that uh, they're, uh, they're getting pummeled inside, and there actually is a takedown. Uh, when you see Nancy Pelosi being, quote, investigated, it means that the, the Israeli grip on the American heart is starting to be loosened finger by finger. Because when well, you see Feinstein... Uh, uh, and Nancy, Nancy uh, and, and one of my most favorite people of all time, by uh, the way. Oh, she is favorite, uh, isn't she, right? Oh, yeah. You know Nancy? Yeah. I call her Palauzi. She's Palauzi. a very lousy person. I call her Pepsi Cola. But anyway, No, no, that's too nice. Said, uh, it means, means she almost looks sweet. She's not sweet. She's about as no, sweet as a No, she looks like somebody uh, attacked her with a cattle prod, and I, well, we're on the air, so I can't go into any more detail than that. But well, anyway. she had enough plastic surgery that if she wants to scratch her butt, she just needs to scratch her forehead. That reminds me of a joke, but I can't tell you that is. Yeah, okay, I know. Now, uh, uh, no, no, honestly, so the look, she has this look like, please believe me or I'm going to have a seizure right now. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, and she tells you a bold-faced lie, like, you have to find out what's in the, in the Obamacare by passing it, and then you can read it later. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, duh. Yeah. It's like, Washington you hold your head and you go, process. oh, my gosh, I mean, this woman represents us? It's well, she scary. was the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and she's the minority oh, leader. Oh, my gosh. It's... But, but what she has said is if you oppose the intelligence agencies or the CIA, they come after you. And then, of course, Dianne Feinstein, another one of my favorite people of all time, oh, yeah, who wonderful. never found any reason uh, not to totally support, uh, and she's uh, a, a chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, never found any reason not to totally support the gross expansion of NSA, etc., spying on every single American in direct violation of the United States Constitution. But it came out just within the last few days that, guess what, the intelligence community was spying on the U.S. senators. And she, you know, uh, uh, it, what's good for yeah, the yeah. goose is not good for the gander, I guess. I guess you never got to hear. You never heard that uh, child's uh, that child's story when she was a little girl. That uh, I guess in Israeli things, what's good for the human Israeli is not good for the soulless dog Gentile. I guess so because she's mad as hell. And, uh, you know, there's even rumors of, uh, of uh, impeachment proceedings and everything else. And U.S. Uh, Senator uh, Rand Paul... Who are they going to impeach? Who's going to impeach who? Well, uh, there, there, is, there are uh-huh. a growing number of Democrats in the House and Senate that are extremely concerned about Obama. Uh, extremely and- concerned? That's like guy playing matches only when you light them this time. It's like, I think, it, and this is what I heard from my rumors, is that they took the nuclear football recently away from Obama, and now all he can do is watch ESPN in the blue room behind there <laughs> <laughs> and watch the blogs to see how many worship him, you know. <laughs> Hail Obama, Satan's minion on earth. Hail Obama. Well, uh, Rand Paul, and I don't like him as much as uh, his, his <clears throat> dad, but uh, both are at least partly, uh, uh, you know, object to all the, the, the evil that's going on. Uh, but he says the U.S. intelligence community is absolutely drunk with power. And, he, you know, he's just within the last day, he's blasted well, they, they, the they, CIA. Since, George, since George Bush Sr., they've taken over the government. They, they may even try to assassinate uh, Ronald Reagan. We know that was a CIA op, just like they killed Kennedy. We well, know that the CIA uh, think that they Kennedy. run the government now. They look. They killed uh, President Kennedy in broad daylight, framed uh, Oswald, who was an intelligence operative, uh, and they got by with it. Uh, then, when uh, his brother Robert was running for president, 
they killed Martin Luther King uh, for a couple reasons. One, he was uh, inc- going to really go into being anti-war big time, uh, and they were scared of him. But you don't want to anti-war? Why would he do that? Now, come on. Yeah, well, I, well because he was a he, he was a Christian. Uh, he wasn't ah, perfect, but he was a good man, be, and he was a Christian. Yeah. But but look, the reason, the primary reason to kill Martin Luther King was to derail the Robert Kennedy bid for presidency. And I, you know, I was here in Indiana when all this was taking place, when Martin Luther King was killed. Robert Kennedy was in Indianapolis, and he went out on the streets and he calmed people down, and he, what could have been an absolutely horrific explosion of violence that might have went on and on he actually derailed a lot of that and then they said okay you know we we, we tried the indirect route and within a month they, they blew him away and of course they were they pulled out 13 bullets uh out of the walls and the doors uh in the kitchen in la uh, the hotel kitchen where he was killed and sirhan sirhan didn't have 13 bullets in his revolver in fact probably uh, none of the bullets that he fired uh, hit kennedy and but that's you know they they lie lie lie. Those so are, they those, got those by with that detail. assassination. Now listen and, now you don't don't confuse our our disinformation with with facts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and and of course you know they 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 tried early in in uh, Ronald Reagan's administration to kill him, and they came very close because that exploding bullet uh, it didn't explode. But he almost bled to death before they realized that he had a bullet in him. And, I, you know, I've, I've seen the documentary that was made on it. And, and, and uh, Reagan came very close to dying, but fortunately they were able to stop it. But uh, guess who would have been president then this many years earlier? George Bush Sr. And uh, when John F. Kennedy was going to run for president, he was going to run for the U.S. Senate seat that uh, uh, that famous witch Hillary uh, Clinton ran for. He told his friends that he was determined uh, to get to the bottom of his father's assassination and to bring it all out in the open. And uh, he should have kept that information to himself <clears throat> because they killed JFK Jr. And, uh, you know, he was a very good pilot, and he probably had a Czech pilot with him at, when the crash that's been covered up. But th- they killed several people. If you look at American history, the number of people that have been killed, Andrew Jackson, they tried to kill him several times because he, he killed the central bank. Uh, Abe Lincoln refused to deal with the Rothschilds. The the French Rothschilds wanted to finance the Union war effort while the London Rothschilds were financing the Confederate war effort. And uh, Abe told him to go to hell, and uh, he created the greenbacks, and we just printed the money. And, uh, of course, well, you, know the problem, you know what the problem with all of these presidents? They thought, number one, they were president. Number two, they weren't aggressive enough against their enemies. I would have either exactly. imprisoned or executed every one of them. I wouldn't have been well, they, the people I, I would have, have, I would have, I would have grabbed right. up in one big sweep all of these Rothschild bankers, and they'd be either imprisoned or immediately executed. It would be the end of it. And the uh, problem is, well, these yeah, guys yeah, are yeah, nice guys. They, they have you know, always. We, we need we need Christian leaders that are not nice guys that have a backbone and will deal with the enemy with swift, immediate, and terminal uh, prosecution of the facts. And the elimination of the, uh, uh, the that happened in the French Revolution. <clears throat> the Rothschilds were behind it. Uh, all the aristocracy were marched off, but not Baron Rothschild in Paris, and nobody touched his palace. <clears throat> But uh, right. they looted the palaces of the rest of the aristocracy. Uh, in uh, the, the Russian Revolution, same thing happened. Uh, Rasputin was controlled by, by his, uh, his private secretary, uh, who was a Rothschild agent. Uh, the, the czar was too weak and too kind. Uh, and, you know... It, uh. You you have a pattern in history of these well, people why, why, creating wars. Why do people think being a Christian means you're you're kind? You know, you can be kind to people who deserve it, but people that need judgment, they need swift, immediate, and terminal judgment. Well, real yeah. Christians are Joshua Christians with their sword out and ready to behead those that will not compromise and will not submit or repent. Well, I'm far down the road, and I think we're, we don't, we don't have a leader right now. We have a feather duster carrying bisexual drug addict in the White House. Welcome back, and Tim. 
A little bit of humor here, but uh, in this next segment, let's focus on some of the other news items because things are really, really out of control, and I really think that we are probably within months of a peace treaty that's going to stabilize things and put some, I call it chewing gum, bailing wire, and, uh, and, and stick them to try to hold things together, and that... Temporary well, you know, in Greece, the, the, the civil servants have, are into the second day of a nationwide strike. Uh, the austerity that uh, the IMF, the EU, the uh, et cetera, et cetera, all comes from the global banking cartel families. The uh, austerity fascism that is being forced down the throats of more and more nations, people around the world is going down not too well and i'm i'm a little surprised that you haven't seen a all-out revolution yet in greece but uh... the people are really hurting and why are the people hurting why are we in a a global depression why are our things bad well it's the people at the top are so demonically evil and so crazed uh, with greed, that they want it all. And I mean everything, even everything that's nailed down, they want it all. Now, you have people that are, are like in the Ukraine, what, what they told the people in Ukraine is uh, they were getting like the equivalent of $120 a month for the pensioners, and they've told them, well, you're going to get half that now. Uh, okay, well, let, let me extend it even further, though. And this is where people, uh, you lose them unless you get it to keep on the spiritual track. It's not just greed. It's not just power. It's bloodlust. And it's oh, not yeah. just physical blood. It's the actual death of the soul. They get what we call spiritual astral juju or astral glory from the dark side by massive murder, not just of physical bodies, but the destruction of the souls of mankind. We have a that, galactic abortionist. You're term. absolutely but, right. You hit the nail right on the head. <clears throat> yeah. And people need to know we're not just talking about people that are greedy. There's billionaires, and I've talked to people that are very wealthy. And they're freaked out. These are decent people that just happen to be rich. Now, being rich doesn't make you an evil person. In fact, there's lots of very decent people that are very rich. But they have a restraint. They don't want to own things that result in the death of people. They don't want They want to use their wealth in, in what we call rational ways. And if you explain to them, for example, this way of manufacturing, that way of doing things is wrong, look at people like, like Henry Ford. He actually gave decent wages to his factory workers. Uh, he's an example of how... You run a decent and, and many corporation. wealthy people at the time hated him for it. But right. he, he, and he tried to explain it to them in a language they could understand. He said, "Look, I have I have to pay people a decent way so they can buy vehicles from me." Right. And, and here's the, here's the point: if we just took half the money that, that Janet Yellen is now down from eighty five billion to seventy billion, and by the way, there's still forty billion a month being printed to send to countries all over the world. So one hundred ten billion a month. If half of that was just issued as checks. Just to everybody in the nation, men, women, and children, you have to buy America, and you have to certify it's made in America. You have to buy, you know, made in America. guess one hundred made in America. Guess what? The economy would turn around in a month. It's oh, we've crazy. been in the greatest period of prosperity. <clears throat> because let me tell you, uh, while the Ukraine has probably the number one black earth uh, grain growing area, the second is in the United States and and uh, uh, part yeah. of Canada. But, yeah, you're talking about you're talking about uh, North Dakota, uh, Minnesota, right. Wisconsin, right. and right up into Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There, there's this lake up there, which is an ancient lake, is the best. That's a larger area than Ukraine, by the way, and that's why you, there's so many Ukrainians yeah, in but Alberta. It's, colder. I, I got from, it's, it's it's colder, but uh, and there are areas like in Illinois it, that the, the the in central Illinois <laughs> where really the, the the plain, the Great Plain state, kind of begins. Yeah, but when you, if you plant a crop down there in Canada in a giant area, it doesn't matter. You got like you got light to ten o'clock or eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, uh, you're going to grow amazing amounts of food, which is why you know the grain belt there. And by the way, they should be growing grain that's not sprayed with Roundup glyphosate that makes gluten toxic. They should yeah, well, be they not putting GMO crops. By the way, that that's in every person they've tested and every animal they've tested in the United States. Well, it's killing us, okay? And the other thing is if you eat meat from GMO food, soybean or corn base, which now even the French, this last week, they banned, uh, which really ticked off the World Trade Organization, they banned accepting GMO corn. And the Chinese, even the Chinese, which will send melamine to kill our pets, 
We're, they said we're not taking that stuff from America. They banned our our, our muscles. Uh, or you our know, I, I, I quit eating cereal because of uh, of uh, my concerns over that. But I recently bought the uh, music. Uh, what do you call it? Um, um, Organic uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, from uh, Aldi because it's made in Germany, and Germany won't allow uh, genetically modified crops. You mean but they like sperm? Per- they do, they they lovers of sperm, right? They want they know that you don't grow sperm if you eat Ma eighty corn and if you feed it to your pets and animals, it stops sperm development. You can say, See you later, sperm, no more human well, reproduction. They, they they want to kill off the human race. They're 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 that Right. Demonic. So anybody wants to dispute it, I tell them, you know, if you're a numbskull and you really think you know better than Doctor Deagle and Tim Alexander and other experts, be wise, be brave, you know. Get your guts up and say I'm going to call it in there, and I'm going to tell those idiots off because they're just conspiracy theorists. Come on into my cage match, and I'm going to give you the beating of your life intellectually. <laughs> you need to realize out there that real Christians have a backbone, a big mouth, and they have their sword drawn ready to chop. They're not passive. They're not nice. People real real Christians aren't nice. They're loving, and there's a big difference. Loving means I'm willing to die for you. I'm willing to suffer for you, but I'm not going to take your guff. You love the sinner, but you hate the sin. Right, and, and the other thing is, you unconditionally you have the love of God for those people, but you won't tolerate their garbage. That's well, what that's what real love is. We got off the tangent here, but what I was trying, the point I was trying to make, uh, started two or three minutes ago. And yeah, let's go. Was was we? This country is so rich. The streets should be paved with gold. I mean, rich in the sense of our our land for agriculture, our mineral wealth, our 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 Euro culture, uh, our people, everything. our education levels, everything. And we're in our an economic an depression with many, many tens of millions of people out of work, many yeah. tens of millions more people working part-time jobs at Mickey D and Wally World. Uh, the highest percentage of people was. Uh, uh, since probably ever, who are in their 20s and even early 30s still living with mom and dad because they can't even afford an apartment. Uh, why? Because they're stealing everything from us. Right, and, and also, by the way, letting them quite, do it. these are the same bastards that are bringing illegal drugs, the same bastards that put medical schools and will pull a doctor's license because they don't prescribe the toxic dissociative Absolutely. anesthetics. Absolutely. That, Medicine so has the become the one SOB of the worst scams out there. That's why one of the first things that needs to happen to revise health care is to get rid of malpractice attorneys and state licensing boards. We need to have national licensing and boards. And break up Big Pharma. Break up Big Pharma and basically say, we're done with you. And we make sure that people are responsible. If you want universal health care, everybody gets traumatic health care. Everybody has a tax write-off for anything you do to, to improve your health. No one goes without health care. In fact, what you do is you pay the primary doctors, they hire everybody else, everybody's paid a salary. You give them differential amounts, and if they want to get extra amounts, they, they do research, they develop new techniques for treating illness. But this idea of underpaying doctors or having them on a fee-for-service, you try to make them slaves, and then you want to make, quote, HIPAA and these records so that they, quote, have privacy. No, your records get sold to drug companies and and marketing companies and so on. Or, or hospitals that mark a, a procedure exactly. up several thousand percent. Exactly. It's really obscene. Yeah. Get right with God. Mm-hmm.